Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be teaching you how to air layer a breadfruit tree. It's a really simple, cool process that I'm gonna take you through. I'm gonna show the exact process of it and explain what you need, and then afterwards we'll go into the science of it and enjoy. Okay, so first I'm gonna walk you through the four things that you're gonna need. So the first thing you're gonna need is something fibrous and relatively sterile. This is coconut husk. What I'm doing is I'm ripping shreds off of it and then I'm using these as the inside of the air layer pod. Next, a sharp blade. This will be used to make a cut on the branch of the breadfruit tree or whichever tree you want to air layer. Third, we're gonna need string. And fourth, tin foil or saran wrap. Either will work. Saran wrap, I'd say, would be preferable, but in this case, this is what we have, so we're working with it and it's gonna work out fine. Here I am next to this little root sucker uh, from the breadfruit tree to my left here. So this sprouted up off of the root and we're going to make an air layer from it. I'm going to demonstrate the process and I hope you are able to take something away and maybe do it yourself. The first step involves removing a strip of the bark from the root sucker. So using this blade, the first thing I'm going to do for easier access to the stem is I'm just going to remove these two leaves. That won't harm the tree itself when we air layer it. It just allows me to have a little bit more room to work with. I'm going to start by cutting two rings around the stem. When you're doing this, you want to keep the strip of bark that you remove between two nodes. And you want it to be about three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half, depending on the size of the branch that you're air layering. This is a very thin branch, so I'm making a smaller one about three quarters of an inch. It's also very important when you're making the initial incision to not press too hard. On a thin branch, you can end up cutting through it, breaking the branch, and you'll have no air layer. The next step is to use the blade and scrape away the cambium layer. With the breadfruit, you can't really see very well where the cambium layer ends, but if you scrape it thoroughly to the point where the exposed section seems to be getting a bit dry, then you're likely through scraping the very thin cambium layer of the root sucker. So it's important to be very thorough about this part. If you leave any section of the cambium layer connected, nutrients will continue to flow from the leaves down into the roots of the breadfruit and the cambium layer will regenerate and the air layer process will not be able to occur. So now that we've got this section exposed, we've got the nutrients being stopped from flowing from the leaves down into the root of the breadfruit and back up and now we're ready to apply the air layer itself. The first material is this coconut husk which we've soaked in water. We want it to be moist but not drenched in liquid so we're soaking it and then squeezing out the water. Now we're going to take some string and we're going to cut it at about a meter in length. It could be longer or shorter. It's just going to be used to tie the coconut husk to the air layer. So a good thing to do is to tie a knot like this at the end of the string being just a fold and then a simple overhand knot leaving a small loop at the end that you can stick the other end of the string through when you want to tie the coconut husk onto the branch. So now we're going to do just that as I add the coconut husk around the branch. So we're going to want to put the coconut husk on the branch with most of it below the removed bark because that's where the roots are going to start growing into. We want this to be like a tree once we cut it below here when we're finished and we want most of the roots to be growing into this section so we can put it in a pot and have it growing as a regular tree would. And we want the cutting to be completely covered, totally surrounded by coconut husk. For this part, it's also very important to be very fragile with the branch. I'm feeling the tension as you tighten the string and tie the coconut husk on as not to snap it. Now that we've got it on there, we want to just make sure that it's tight and it's not going to slide around without the branch too much. That's pretty good. And now for the next step. Okay, so for the final step, we're going to take our sheet of tin foil and we're going to wrap it around, tightening it around the edges as to prevent any water or insects from getting into the air layer and wrapping it nicely. Like a baked potato at the barbecue. Now typically for this part, we would actually want to use something like saran wrap first and then putting tin foil on on top. Right now we don't have that. We just have tin foil, so that's what we're using. If you're doing it on your own and you have access to that supply, definitely a good idea to first wrap it in saran wrap and then putting the tin foil on as a last measure. So getting the top closed off, tightened very well, as well as the bottom. And now we'll leave it like that for the next two months. And then once we feel that it's time, We'll check on it and see if roots have started growing out of the bark we removed into the coconut husk. And if it looks like the roots have been growing well, we'll cut it right below the tied on coconut husk and we will propagate this tree in a pot 
and have ourselves another breadfruit tree. Okay, it's been about three months since I made the first part of this video and created this air layer and now we're gonna snip it and check for roots and hopefully propagate it. Bingo. So as you can see, we got a ton of root action. This air layer did really well. This is a lot of roots. I'm actually gonna remove a few of them just so that it doesn't get root bound. Uh, when there's so many roots in such a small area, what tends to happen is they spiral around each other and can even like strangle themselves. So we're gonna snip some of these roots, remove the string, and then propagate this into a pot. So for a closer look, here's all the roots. And remember, this was just a root sucker. I made the incision and all these roots grew out of there. So next, I'm gonna snip off some of the leaves so that they don't expel water for this new plant that's gonna need as much energy going into the roots as possible to keep it alive once I propagate it. Okay, so we're gonna want it to look like this. And now we're gonna put it in the pot. So here I have a pot that's filled with some soil. I'm just gonna place that in there and then Top that up, and then I'm gonna water it really well once I'm done with this. So air layering is a really awesome technique. The way we did it here is one of the ways of air layering a breadfruit tree. Taking the root sucker, a small sprout of the same tree that has sprouted up from the roots and air layering that. Although there's other ways to air layer the breadfruit tree. So there's small branches that'll come off of the bigger branches with more leaves. And when those are the right size, you can actually air layer the base of those and let the roots grow into the air layer and get a new tree from that. It's really cool because, you know, one tree can provide you with, who knows, up to 40 air layers, which means 40 new trees. We've done 40 on the tree here before. Yeah, it's just like endless breadfruit, sharing the food security and sharing the trees with everybody.